So welcome NSU students for another semester of case competitions. Uh, today, we are gonna be covering our information session, answering any questions you have on what the case entails this semester, how to join, how do you earn credit for it, what are the prizes, um, and what are things you need to know uh, before deadlines. Um, so I'm gonna start off by letting everyone that's a part of our case competition introduce themselves. Uh, my name is Emilio Lorenzo. I'm the Associate Director of Employer Relations. Hi, everyone. My name is Olivia Fogel, and I am a career advisor within CAPS. Hello, everyone. My name is Naima Butler, Assistant Director of Employer Relations. And hello, I'm Jerome, and I'm your case competition coordinator. Kelly, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I was just moving, uh, I'm moving away from all the noise. So my name is Kelly Callahan. Uh, I am a grad assistant for Military Affairs Veterans Resource Center and helping with this event. So great collaborators. Um, you know, we're gonna be the folks that are most likely you'll be communicating with. You'll get a lot of emails from Jerome. You'll see a lot of emails from Olivia, myself and Kelly. Um, this entire competition is being held by um, U.S. Army, Military Affairs Veteran Resource Center, um, the CAPS office, the Helmholtz College of Arts and Sciences, and the College of Osteopathic Medicine. Um, so we have a lot of great things to talk to you about. So let's get into the main part, what you all came here for. So this semester, we have an exciting case competition focused on telehealth. Um, as you can imagine, with uh, the rise of COVID, um, telehealth has been an ever-growing trend in healthcare. So students this semester will be challenged to immerse themselves in the knowledge of telehealth. Um, we're going to get into the old details, but the main focus of it is you'll be developing a seven-page research paper that not only summarizes trends in telehealth since COVID and before COVID, um, but it will also provide recommendations on where the world is going with telehealth going forward and improving access to healthcare or ensuring that as this growth in telehealth happens, that we are thinking of some of the obstacles that could come into play. Now, as you're developing that research paper, we will be having various uh, workshops and they'll all be recorded. And these workshops are to teach you some of the skills necessary when working as a healthcare professional with patients. Um, and you've seen some of them that are listed on this uh, full description. We also have some additional ones we haven't posted yet. that are gonna be hosted by the College of Osteopathic Medicine and led by actual faculty. So pretty exciting, we have a lot of things. And now these workshops are gonna be teaching you key skills. And the, when you submit your research paper, the top four submissions of that paper will be selected as part of a virtual live comp uh, scenario where you get to work on patient actors and apply those same skills. So two components we'll be talking about today are what the research paper entails, and if you get selected as one of the top research papers, what the live competition will be like. Now, the great part about it is if you even if you don't get selected for the live competition, um, you will earn credit for this experience, and it will be a research experience to add. Uh, many of you I know have a long-term goal of entering medical school or professional school or even joining the research field, and this is a great resume builder for you to add to your portfolio and also use as a selling point for future opportunities. So you can do this competition by yourself or with up to three to five individuals. So at max, you can have a team of five. At minimum, you could do it by yourself. There's no uh, other requirements outside of that on how you set that up. Um, now, what's the case going to involve? I'm going to kind of scroll on down. So as we know, telehealth is the distribution of health-related services information via electronic information telecommunication technologies. It allows long distance patient and clinician contact, care, advice, reminders, education, intervention, monitoring, remote admissions, diagnosis onwards. 
With the rise of COVID, as I mentioned, telehealth is ever growing. It's a huge tool now for professionals to treat patients. So a recent trend suggests that remote patients will not be the only ones who benefit from telehealth. An increasing number of patients who live in urban areas have also begun to take notice on this growing uh, trend. So it's because of these interest areas that we wanna make sure as this grows, is telehealth only available to you know, populations that can afford maybe the technology or as this grows, are we doing enough to ensure that access to telehealth is universal? So students and your teams will be challenged to develop a seven page. This paper will include three areas and you should have chapter headings in your proposal <coughs> that helps organize for the judges. So the chapter headings are introduction to telehealth. How will telehealth be incorporated and play a role in healthcare in the future? And then how can telehealth be further developed to be interprofessional and focus on the health of the whole patient? And we're gonna break down these sections for you so you know what you need. And feel free to send questions through the chat box, unmute yourself and ask a question, um, or you could save it for the end, but however you see fit, this is for you to learn. So the first chapter in your uh, paper, introduction to telehealth. It needs to be a minimum of two pages. If you go past that two pages, it's okay, um, but you're not gonna be graded by having more. It's gonna be graded on the content. Now within those two pages, you need to address all of these bullet points. So you need to define telehealth and its prevalence in the industry. How, you know, expand on telehealth trends in, in the healthcare. So like, how is it gone? What's going on in telehealth? What was it like before COVID? What is it like now? What is the research telling you it's going? What are the benefits of telehealth for patients and families, especially with COVID? What are the weaknesses and issues that come with the rise of telehealth, aka cybersecurity, aka access to care, et cetera? And then, as I mentioned, how has telehealth been utilized before COVID? And how has telehealth affected the professionals, clinics, and hospitals? You know, now that they're doing more, you know, telehealth appointments, how has that changed the dynamics in the relationship, the way it's produced, the way it's provided onwards? So chapter one, introduction of telehealth. And I think we had a question here. I'll stop real quick. So um, I know we got the quote. Will you provide us with example of research that was selected in previous years? So we, we won't be doing that because every semester we have a new research. However, as soon as I'm done going through this case description, I will be sharing the rubric and we'll go point by point in the rubric on how uh, you need to deliver it. Um, so, so far for chapter one, as long as you address these areas and you show the level of research that you've done, this is kind of what we're looking for in that uh, section. Now, the next two sections isn't just based on research, it's based on critical thinking skills. So it's not just, hey, this is what the research is telling me. A part of this competition involves reading the research, understanding it, and then coming up with your own recommendations. Guys, you're driving the ship. You're providing the recommendations. Now, obviously, anything you recommend, you need to be practical. You can't just say, hey, the US will spend $1 trillion to ensure everyone has access to a laptop and telehealth. That's not realistic. So we need to ensure that anything you recommend, you're able to back it up on how it's going to happen. And you can mention, we'll collaborate with this area of the government or do this. You have a blank canvas to work with. And we're, one of the things you'll be measured on is your creativity and ability to think outside the box with some practicality. <coughs> so let me get a sip of water real quick. So the next one, the next chapter, how will telehealth be incorporated and play a role in healthcare in the future? This is minimum of three pages and there's a lot to cover here. One area, provide ideas on how telehealth can be improved to better serve the patients. So again, 
you've now, the first chapter, you really immersed yourself in the research. Now start thinking, based on what you know about it, how can it be improved? And there really is no wrong answer to this, but there are better right answers. And so you need to think critically on what's going to come up and how can it be better improved to serve patients. Then provide recommendations on how telehealth can be incorporated in urban areas, vulnerable populations, or to specific populations. So you don't have to address all of these, but as much as you can, especially the urban areas, the vulnerable populations, um, and some of these mesh together, like, you know, our veteran populations sometimes fall under some of these categories. But really, access to healthcare, how is it going to be incorporated to serve all patients, not just, you know, maybe well off or rich neighborhoods, we need to make sure that as telehealth grows, it's not just those that can afford the technology involved that have access to it. So some sub questions to that, how can local clinics better utilize telehealth to support the community? You know, how will referrals be impacted by telehealth? What are obstacles that exist for the expansion of telehealth? Cost, cybersecurity, access for underrepresented population, insurance, etc. And this is your chance to explain yourself. Give me the details. Talk about the details. Explain your logic. The more you can do that, the more it's going to hit home that you've provided the best recommendation. And again, you can come up with your own program, your own ideas. Think outside the box. That's our biggest recommendation as you tackle these areas, especially chapter two here and the next one that I'm going to be speaking about. Finally, the third chapter is how can telehealth be further developed to be interprofessional and focus on the health of the whole patient. So this is going to be a minimum of two pages. And then these are the things you have to address. How can telehealth be branched out into other areas of healthcare, nutrition, public health, pharmacy, et cetera? How can we prepare future health professionals to work effectively using telehealth? Like, is there something that we need to change in terms of medical school education, undergraduate education? Like, what is it that can be set up so that doctors are prepared for these trends? Should proficiency in telehealth technology be a requirement for health profession education going forward? Can telehealth also be used for more specialized areas of health? cardiology, dermatology, endocrinology, infectious disease. This is where you want to think outside the box and how it will be incorporated. And then finally, and one of the main points of this section, what are you and your team's future recommendations? And is it cost effective, your recommendations? So I'm going to pause right there for just one moment um, and see does anyone have any questions on those three sections? And just know that as you work on it, you can always reach out to us and to get feedback. We always give very objective feedback. We'll never tell you what other teams are working on. If you ask us, how does this sound? You know, we're going to be giving objective answers. We're going to be like, well, if you needed to think more outside the box, we might be like, well, how have you supported this idea? How have you given more details? Things like that. Um, but we'll never say this is wrong and this is right because there's so many ways you can approach this project. My biggest thing is don't just give the facts, give the recommendations that are based on the research and facts you've done. Now, before I keep going into... Um, well, actually, I'll go through all of this and then we'll go into the rubric. So separate from, oh, and I think I had a question. Uh, will there be a representative assigned to each team? No, you can always reach out to any one of us. Uh, we have an email called casecompetitions at nova.edu um, that you could always reach out to. And then once we have all the teams signed up, we will also have allocated drop-in hours. So if you and your team or one member of your team wanted to be like, hey, we wanted to get some feedback or we want to show um, what we've developed thus far. Can we talk to someone? Well, you could either come to one of our drop-in hours 
um, or you could email us and we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Now, uh, great question I just saw about, should it be cited in a specific style? We leave it to you. As long as you're citing your materials, where you're not gonna be judged on APA, MLA, anything like that. We just wanna see separate from the seven pages, a reference page. And if you needed to do any references that they're there, um, that just shows you've done your research, but you're, you're not gonna be um, evaluated on um, if there was an error with your APA formatting or anything like that. Um, yeah, uh, Mika, you had a question? Yeah, um, I would, I know you said that if we were to ask like how our project and stuff is looking, we'll get more of an objective answer. But if we ask, are we like looking too small term versus big? Like I guess small idea versus big idea, will you tell us that? Absolutely, that's the stuff that we'll say, but I'll in a way where I'm like, without giving you the answer, cause I won't know the answer. I'll say, Biga, this is looking good, but I don't know if you guys are thinking maybe you're thinking too local scale like South Florida. Have you thought about how this is gonna affect the whole population or have you considered these specific populations? So we always give those type of questions. Like it won't be completely objective. There will be some things where we'll just be like very transparent with you on what you might be missing and how to be on the right track without giving you any recommendations that we may have heard from other teams. It's more like broad stroke uh, feedback we're giving. Um, so I know a question, what can we do to make our paper stand out from the rest to make it more captivating while being backed up by latest trends in research? Um, and so this is where separate from the seven pages, you can think outside the box. If you would like, if you wanted to provide visuals, if you wanted to, again, it's going to stand out by the recommendations you provide. So that's something that's going to stand out. Everyone's paper is going to be read with the same level of detail but what are you doing to make sure you're clearly explaining this to the judges? So seven pages is the minimum, but you can have additional pages that are allocated to um, sample, let's say uh, plans of actions, implementation plans, um, promotion, visuals, um, and just other things that you feel would be, would support your recommendation. So that would be the way that it stands out is the way that you explain it, the details you provide, the creativity in your recommendations um, and anything else that you could do to support that in your uh, research paper. I had a question, but it was not like pertaining to um, the case competition outline per se. I wanted to ask if we can do like two members instead of like three to five. Yeah, I, yeah, I had mentioned that you could do it by yourself you could do it with two people, you could do it with three, four, five, whatever you see fit. Um, so if you're doing it by yourself, you know, you're, you're, everything's on you as a responsibility. If it's two of you, you could break it up three to four or five. Um, it can come in any form, no more than five and obviously a minimum of at least one person. <laughs> and I know I got a question of word count. There is no word count. It's why we said seven pages minimum and making sure you're addressing each of the subsections uh, within there. But no word count. Um, that's not what you're measured on. You're, you're measured on, did you clearly answer the question? Did you clearly solve the, the problem? Um, so it's not like a class. Like classes, it's like, hey, three pages. And that this is more like you're trying to solve something that's actually facing the US. So it's like it's about you actually solving the issue. But great question so far, guys. Um, feel free to keep sending it in or, or stopping me. I'm happy to kind of uh, address anything that comes up. Um, another question, will we have to wait to attend the workshops before we can start writing the paper or we can begin whenever? Great question, Carlos. You could start whenever. Once you sign up for the competition, which we're gonna talk about in a second, we'll enroll you in a Canvas course, which will have all the deadlines, this full description, Jerome will also be posting some resources that can assist you, um, but all will be there. These workshops are in addition to that, and we know that you have a busy schedule. That's why all of these workshops will be recorded. Obviously, it would be great to have you attend in person, um, and you should try at least one member of your team attend some parts of the workshop in person, but the expectation is that as long as you're gathering the information on your own and working, this is why 
unlike an internship or research opportunity that you're scheduled every week at certain times, you guys build your own schedules. You and your team allocate the time you need. And you have until now and um, March to be able to uh, submit your paper. So you have a lot of flexibility on how you go about uh, solving this issue. Um, the three workshops, and you can see we have the schedules here. Uh, the innovation session is we're in it right now. Next week, we're having a session and I'll just even share my um, the flyer for it. Next week, we're hosting a workshop on soap notes. Um, and don't worry of keeping track next week. Um, if you sign up for the case competition, we'll be sending you weekly reminders of what's going on that week. And if you miss the workshop, the recording will be posted by the end of the week in the discussion board. But we have a lot of workshops planned. Um, we have soap notes, which is next week, which is a little bit of scribing. It's teaching you how to write the notes for telehealth patients. Workshop number two um, is in February. And it's talking about the resiliency you need working in patients and healthcare. And then in March, we're doing a workshop on dealing with difficult patients in a virtual space. Um, and then again, we're working on dates for three more workshops that are being led by osteopathic medicine faculty. Um, and those would be additional information for you. Um, whether you're participating in the competition or not, you're welcome to attend the workshops. These are really for pre-health students to develop key skills um, because going to medical school and professional school, very rarely do you get to apply clinical skills with patients because that gets learned in medical school. What they are expecting you to do before your healthcare program is develop the foundational transferable skills. And that's why we've developed these scenarios and these breakout rooms for the life scenario so that you can practice those skills but you're also going to be hearing about these skills from actual medics, faculty in the osteopathic medical school that teach medicine to students. So this is going to be rich knowledge for you to learn, whether it's a part of this competition or in your future healthcare career track. So let's talk about deadlines and everything. So you're going to submit your research paper by Wednesday, March 31st at midnight. That's a full two months from now, guys. So that's a lot of time that you can work independently and move forward on this. Once you submit it, but within a week, you'll be let, you'll, we'll let you know if you've been selected for the live competition, which will be April 14th from 11.30 to 1.30. And don't worry, we're, the reason it's two hours is that we can work with your class schedule. So if you are one of the teams selected, we'll work with you on your class schedule to make sure that you get exposed to at least two breakout rooms with the patient scenarios um, and you'll be evaluated on that. The winning team will receive $400 worth of gift cards to split with their team members. So if you do the competition by yourself, that's $400 worth of gift cards. If you do it with two people, you split it in half, four people, five people onwards. Um, what we do is we provide the gift cards in $50 increments so that it's easy for you to be able to split it amongst team members. Now, how do you sign up? Oh, I think I got a question before I can do that. Are all the students from a team required to attend at least one session or can one student attend on behalf? Absolutely, one team member can attend on everyone's behalf. Um, the live competition, you need pretty much any of the team that you want there. I mean, we're gonna be flexible. If someone can make it, we'll work with them. Um, but for the workshops, if one member on the team could attend, even for a little bit, that would be ideal. Um, if something happens and you, no one on the team can make it, just communicate with us. And again, we're going to be recording it, but um, nothing's like someone being able to be there and ans ask questions. So my recommendation, even though it's not required, you find a way to have someone on your team at least be able to attend for a portion of the, of the workshop. So what do we need? What do you need to do? To sign up for the competition, you'd email casecompetitions at nova.edu and provide the names and email addresses for all of your team members. Once you've done that, you'll receive an email from Jerome or one of us that say, thank you, we've signed you up. And then you'll get an email that indicates you've been signed up for the Canvas course. 
and there it has all the assignments, the recordings. It'll show up just like your other online courses. And Olivia is going to be going through that in a moment. Um, after that, you can attend the workshops, the live events. And then again, you'd submit your research paper by Wednesday, March 31st at midnight. Guys, that's the absolute latest date. We tried pushing it back so that we had enough time. Um, so there won't be any extensions for this one. So plan accordingly that it is uh, the March 31st. So good question. If we ever decide to back out for any, is that possible? That's okay. As long as it's not too deep into the competition. Um, you know, it, this is based on the honor code and, um, you know, integrity. And as though that's a key element of healthcare. So obviously, you know, you sign up and then it comes February and you're like, I'm overwhelmed. I can't do it. Me, Olivia, and the whole team are very understanding. We understand that. But <clears throat> If it's because of lack of preparation that you didn't put it in, um, not that there's any consequences, but just keep us in the loop, communicate with us. You know, there's there's no gra grade tied to this. This is for your own career future. Obviously, there's a prize involved, but the biggest thing is that you have something to sell in your resume and your professional documents. I would also say don't get discouraged. I have plenty of teams who said, Mill, I think I'm going to drop out. I don't feel my proposal is good enough. And those same teams end up winning. You don't know what everyone else is creating. You don't know how creative you are, what you're developing. Put your best foot forward. We've had freshmen win competitions, dealing with the CDC onwards. This is for you to grow. And you don't want to miss out on your chance to add this to your resume. So there is no deadline to drop out. We just say, please be have some integrity and honor when you kind of go about it. And if you know you're going to drop out, just letting us know as early as possible. But no, we're very flexible we're, we're, and we're very understanding with everything that's going on. If you can't do it, you can't do it. And there won't be any consequence for that. Um, and then finally, as I mentioned, if you're a top team, you'll select it to go into a live scenario, which will be in a Zoom breakout. Um, and you'll be in a room with US Army medics and patient actors, and you'll be able to apply those skills learned in the workshop going into that. And there'll be a full review of those workshop details leading into the live scenario. And Olivia is going to be talking about how to earn credit, but case competitions, whether you get selected for the live scenario or not, you'll earn one unit of experiential learning credit. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you before I turn it over to Olivia on things is I wanted to share. posted on the canvas course so don't worry if you don't have this right now we've provided a breakdown of each section and how much each section is going to count um and as you can see the three sections that you have to write the creativity and interdisciplinary approach the clear communication of ideas and strategies and the extent of research conducted every team will be measured out of 50 points the top four and this is just the research paper. The top four teams will then uh, be selected for the live competition. You will have a separate rubric for the live competition and how you'll be measured. And we'll share that with you if you get selected. The winning team will be measured equally between their research proposal and their live competition. So one is not going to be worth it more than the other. So if you're one of the top four teams, <coughs> you'll have one score from the research paper, and then another score for the live competition. Those scores combined will indicate who is our winner for the semester. So guys, that was a lot of information. Um, before I turn it over to Livy, who's gonna walk you through the Canvas course, um, how to earn Excel credits for this. Um, do you have any questions for me or something that maybe I didn't cover, or a question that you have maybe on what I did cover? Um, is the paper double spaced? Um, I leave that to you. As long as you, again, it's not about word count. So if you double space it, but you're not as detailed with addressing each of these prompts, you're not going to get as high of a score as someone that may be either single space or double space, but they were very clear and detailed with addressing these points. So we're flexible, double or single. As long, again, you're going to be measured 
not on the word count or, or it's more, did you address this clearly and creatively and interdisciplinary? So um, can the research paper we submit get published? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'll probably have to talk to the faculty on how we would do that. But, um, you know, with this being a big trend, um, definitely could speak to faculty and others to see what route we could take to get um, that movement. So um, no clear answer right now, but absolutely, we'd love to get this um, in a grander scale for your own uh, development. Some great questions, guys. Any, any other questions? Um, I don't know if it's too soon to ask, but um, what, like, um, do you guys know what who the judges panel will be? Um, like, like last semester, we were told who will be judging our papers, but do you guys have any idea who will be doing it this semester? Yeah, so um, there will be U.S. Army medic team involved. There'll be biology faculty or Halmos faculty. There'll be public health and nutrition faculty members. Um, that'll be the main uh, faculty members. Some of the same ones from last semester are this. Uh, we usually ask the faculty chairs um, who would be able to be able to be a part of it to review all the research submissions. Uh, but it's always a balance of uh, biology, chemistry, public health, nutrition, um, and some of our graduate faculty in osteopathic medicine. So um, I got a question. Can the paper include information or interviews we conduct, or is it only text-based research? Remember, that's a really good question. And um, without showing your hand, that is definitely some of the creative things you guys should be thinking about. Don't just limit it to the research available to you. I people can you can call clinics, you can interview, you can do surveys, and then you could based on that information you can bump with your own recommendations. You could look at what other countries have done. Uh, really, the world's your oyster on how you can approach this competition. The more outside the box and detailed you approach it, like a true researcher or public health professional, the more likely your paper is going to be one of the top in, in included there. And not to say doing that is going to give you the edge. It's all about how doing that led to better data that then provided a better recommendation for your team. I have a question. Yeah, um, please. So for the live scenarios, are they being are we being um, provided that the teams are made that far? Are they being evaluated on the way they incorporate telehealth in a bunch of scenarios from trauma to mental health? Yeah, so it's a good good point, Andre. So um, if you're one of the top four teams selected, um, we'll let you know um, the, the, ty the four types of scenarios you may face, but very broadly, because they're obviously going to be just like you're a doctor and you walk into a room, there's some variables that come into play. Um, but we'll give you the exact things of what we're looking for, what you might face, um, and let you know that two out of these four scenarios you will be facing so that your team can prepare accordingly and what we're looking for in those. Um, so after every workshop and at the end, we'll be sure to include all of the components that um, would be part of the live competition based on that workshop. Here we go, thank you. I had another question here. Can the paper include psycho psychology perspective or is this all from biology chemistry perspective? Absolutely not, this is from if you noticed in the, the description, there was no public health, there was no biology, there was no science words used. The word was health. Our mental health, our uh, physical health, um, you know, but again, one of the assets of the paper is the access to care. So without the word itself, it is a public health component, but you can expand it to a variety of ways we want to. Um, you could add the question, can I add personal experience in the research paper? Yes, but remember, it, it's treated as if you're submitting a true academic uh, paper and recommendation to a governing body. So you can include uh, personal experiences, but then that needs to lead into well, how does that relate into a whole? Because uh, it, it's not going to be measured on anecdotes. It's going to be measured on tangible results. But yes, personal experience can definitely be used. Awesome. So um, I'll turn it over to Olivia. Olivia, if you wanted to share your screen and show everyone um, what it looks like, 
Um, again, guys, if you ready to sign up or you haven't done so already, you just email casecompetitions at nova.edu with your team information, and then we'll enroll you in the Canvas course uh, for this. Um, and I know I've gotten this quest, just so you know, this is free of cost. This is not going to add to your tuition or anything. This is like uh, you just. This is like where we house everything more than anything. Um, and yes, uh, when we get closer to the comp, will we get more on the live scenarios? Absolutely. Um, as we go closer to the day, and especially when your team's selected, we're going to be giving you the details of what these live scenarios would look like. Olivia. Awesome, thank you, Emilio. So hello everyone, thanks again for being here. Um, you'll see my name and also Jerome's name a lot regarding this Canvas course. So I wanna give you a brief overview of what it entails. There's been so many great questions so far and this could be a really good resource tool for you to help answer some of those questions as you process the information for this competition. So as Emilio addressed earlier, once you are signed up for the competition via email, emailing case competitions on nova.edu, we will send you an invite to be admitted into this Canvas course. So once you accept the invite, you will be able to access the main homepage here, which just outlines what is NSU student case competitions, like how does it work, what do you get for participating, um, you see our cool logo, which we're very proud of, um, and you'll also see some of our recent announcements. And so a lot of these announcements will key you in on important uh, deadlines coming up, um, events that you should be keeping in mind. Um, so keep in mind to look at those recent announcements, similar to a lot of your guys' classes, as I know a lot of you are taking online classes this semester. So speaking of announcements, you can also, of course, access the announcements more in depth um, via the announcements tabs here. When you're enrolled in the class, guys, um, you will see all these old announcements as notifications. I encourage you to read them um, just to stay up to date to make sure you're on the same page, but you'll see all of that here. Now, as for, we're on the same vein of talking about, well, Olivia, I have a question. I know I can email case competitions at Nova.edu. I know I can contact you and Amelia and Jerome directly. What else can I do? So we do have a discussion board called Winter 2021 Telehealth Case Competition Discussion Board. So I encourage you guys to go ahead and also type out your question onto here if you feel comfortable sharing that with the larger student body. Um, oftentimes what we do is if I get a really good question via email, I'll of course, admitting student's name, team's name, I will copy and paste that question and my answer into this discussion board so that you guys, everyone can access it and get a similar answer to a, a very common question, if it's a common question. So I wanted to showcase this to you as well. Let's talk about modules though, which is probably the most important tab um, within the Canvas course as it has all the information you need to know about the competition. You'll notice that when you log on, you'll immediately have two modules set up. One called Getting Started with Case Competitions, Excel Requirements, which we'll go over in about a few moments. Um, but there's also a whole module dedicated to our telehealth case competition. So within this module, you'll see the description for the competition, as well as a competition timeline and workshop information. Um, so if you click on that, it will give you direct links um, to all the information sessions, the workshops, et cetera, links to the assignments for the telehealth essay proposal or research paper. Um, and it gives you important dates here. Note that a lot of uh, all these recordings that we are doing for workshops and for this will be uploaded onto um, our Shark, our, our, well, our career YouTube. Um, so we'll put that link actually onto the campus class so you guys can access that later. And relating back to the module, you'll notice that we also have um, the assignment for the telehealth essay proposal. I know it's a differently worded than the research paper, but it is essentially as an essay proposal, tomato, tomato, it's the same assignments, don't you worry, it's the research paper that you have uploaded um, onto this Canvas as a PDF, Word doc, any of that should work. Um, if you have any issues with that, <clears throat> You'll go ahead and let myself know, um, but it should work seamlessly. It's like any other assignment you have for Canvas um, for your classes. You'll notice that the deadline, again, March 31st by midnight is on there too. So you have up until that time and date to submit your research paper or essay proposal. And um, we've also incorporated the telehealth case competition rubric to be within this module too. I saw good questions about, well, Olivia, when will we be updated about you know the the um, scenarios and other information. 
we will make that available to the teams that are selected for the top four um, as time goes on when that is decided. So that's why it's so important that we meet the March 31st deadline. So that way our judges have enough time to read all of your wonderful research papers and then select the top team before our live, well, our virtual live competition event. So before I talk about the Excel requirements, any questions for me about the, the first few areas of the Canvas course that we addressed so far? Great, I take your silence as I am satisfied. So we'll go ahead and dive into the case competition Excel requirements. So as a fun fact, I mean, I mentioned this earlier, all participants by submitting the research paper is eligible to earn one Excel unit for this competition experience. Very exciting for those of you that are required to earn Excel units for your graduation requirement. If you're like, I've never heard of that before, feel free to chat with myself and I'll be able to help determine if you need to do Excel units. Chances are, if you've never heard of it and you're about to graduate, you're good. But um, on this main module page, um, I'll, I have an introduction and I include my email. So you can email me directly about this information. Um, I will be answering all questions relating to Excel units. Also within this module, um, breaks down what you need to do to earn the unit. So this is the Excel unit requirement for a telehealth competition. Um, in order to earn the unit, I need you all to submit all the requirements, which we'll go over in a moment, by May 16th at 11.59 p.m. Um, I will remind you consistently of that upcoming deadline as we go throughout the semester. But, okay, Olivia, that's great. What do I need to do? So we first need you to submit your telehealth essay proposal by March 31st at 11.59 p.m. Then we need you to upload it onto Portfolio, which if you aren't aware of what Portfolio is, it's like an online portfolio service that's free for NSU students. So I include a link to Portfolio as well as instructions on how to upload it. If you have any questions about how that works, you'll go ahead and let me know, but there is an assignment on the Canvas course where you can upload a link to your Portfolio assignment. Um, let me just take a quick sip of water. Okay, and so once you do that, the last remaining component, last two remaining components, I should say, is going ahead and filling out the Excel checklist that we have for the competition. You can click on this link and it'll bring you to the assignments page for it. So I just wanna demonstrate it to you and show you what this checklist looks like. Oh, perhaps because I'm in the it's not loading the way I want it to. Well, it will open up down, download into a checklist so you'll be filling out. So just be mindful of that. If you have any questions about the checklist, who are you gonna call your case competition team? Um, now, as for going back to the overall unit requirements, the last remaining component is for you to schedule a meet with either a career advisor or your edge advisor if designated at the end of the competition so you can discuss your overall experience. The goal of that session, guys, is so that you can reflect on your case competition experience. Let your advisor know how it went, what did you learn, if you hit any struggles. Um, please provide feedback, be as honest as you possibly can. Let us know so we can improve case competitions as we move forward. We do this for you guys as students, so we want you to be satisfied with your experience. And with that being said, if at any point throughout the competition, you have any um, troubles with your teammates, with assignments being turned in, I want you to please clearly communicate that with us and we can try to assist you as best as possible. But within that session, you can use that time to reflect on your experience. Um, and then you will also um, be requested to add it to your resume. Now you won't be required to submit your resume for in order to earn the unit, but the expectation is, is in that session, you're gonna to wanna to add it to your resume um, and, your, and your career advisor or your edge advisor will be able to assist you with doing that. How do you make an appointment, you're wondering? You can go ahead and do that on Navigate, which I've included a link here for you guys to log on. It's the same place where you've booked your appointments with your academic advisors for those students that are new to us moving career advising appointments onto um, on to navigate from Handshake. So um, last little bit, but you'll also notice that we have included so a couple of assignments. So I mentioned the assignment for the portfolio submission. That is a link you can submit to show that you did upload it onto Portfolio, um, your essay proposal. You'll also notice the assignment for the telehealth Excel checklist 
and the post-competition meeting reflection. You're probably wondering, well, how do I submit that I met with them? I request that you take a screenshot of the fact that you did the meeting. Wonderful, take a screenshot, maybe take a selfie with your, with your advisor and upload that onto this assignment page. Again, I need this all done by May 16th at 11.59. Once you've done all that and I have collected all these materials, I will mark and say they have completed all aspects and you can and will, you will earn the Excel unit at the end of this experience. So that is the Excel side of this case competition. Questions for me um, from the audience about that. And I see someone in the chat. Um, I will go ahead and answer that. Guys, if you have any nicknames or anything along those lines that you wanna use instead, please feel free to do so. Um, we wanna make sure that you guys, if you have different variety of names, whatever you prefer, that is perfect. Um, and other questions relating the Excel requirement or component. All right. Well, it was a lot of information. Uh, and Olivia did a great job kind of through everything. Um, again, this recording for today is going to be on our Canvas course. Um, we're always available to answer any questions you have, um, give you feedback as you move forward. You have over two months to kind of work on everything. Um, and as long as you're moving forward, getting everything together, you're going to earn your Excel units for this competition, uh, potentially be eligible to win $400 worth of gift cards. But again, regardless of the prize, regardless you get selected for the live competition, this is a great selling point for your resume. Uh, many things that individuals that I know have gotten into professional programs and have been asked about in terms of their experience or something they could use in interviews. Um, but I want to give it one last chance to see if anyone had any last questions for us. Um, we'll please, if you already know you want to sign up, please email us. Let's get you on the Canvas course. Let's get you all set up. Um, and we'll be following up with the recording and everything like that. Any questions? So for the live competition, um, you're just being judged on how you approach the patients, um, how do you comfort them. Um, you know, it's not gonna be a verbal presentation. Um, it's, it's just gonna be more like you're in a room with a patient. How are you dealing with the scenario, whether it's um, them being very upset and you're calming them down uh, to a variety of other things, including uh, writing the SOAP notes. So after the live competition, you will be submitting your SOAP notes from that competition. And that's one area you'll be evaluated on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're so excited uh, to have you a part of this. You know, this is something we started at NSU about six years ago. Um, you know, through HOSA, there's national competitions, uh, but NSU is very unique to offer these pre-health case competitions. We've done a variety of different ones. I see a lot of familiar faces in this room today. Um, for you to grow and give you an edge in your pre-health career, um, and things like this is really what makes you stand out from the pack. Well, have a great Thursday. Look forward, in, uh, look forward to all of you signing up or getting your questions. Uh, but thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.